know, I found a couple of distinct Lord of the Rings type foods, and most of them honestly don't sound that good. Hello, welcome to the bookends. This time we're reading Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers by J.R.R. Tolkien. Spoilers, there's spoilers. Ahead. Yeah, you want to get into our toasted BLTs? B-T-L. Book, talk, uh, learn. Uh, I would like to go first because I I want to set the bar kind of low. No, I'm excited. I want to see this. So I did a Middle Earth food guide. You know, there's some food throughout this. I'm just getting kind of hungry watching this, uh, this movie. So I thought I would do a little, a little, uh, little you know, a little how-to here. So, uh, not all of these are in the movie, you know, most of them aren't, but I had to sort of do some research here. So, uh, you know, I found a couple of distinct Lord of the Rings type foods, and most of them honestly don't sound that good. So we've got uh, <laughs> cram, which uh, I don't think that this was in this movie, but it's sort of like a hard tack biscuit um, that lasts for like a really long time, and it doesn't really taste that good. Uh, it's sort of like, a, you know, a ration. Take on a oh, is this what Frodo and Sam like were eating? Were they no, that is Lembus. Oh. And that is like, it's basically like a better version of that stuff made by the elves because they do everything better. So it is like um, cram, it's better. And then there's this other thing that's sort of similar. It's another freaking biscuit like thing. A lot of bread and biscuits and stuff like that. And it's called a honey cake. And also, don't know it wasn't in the movies either, but um, and it's some other random character that's not in the movies makes this thing, um, or maybe this is in the Hobbit even. I don't know, but uh, you know, when I was researching these foods, it, it it came up as well. And then there's another thing here, which is petty dwarf roots, and maybe has another name or something. But you know, I did use the uh, Lord of the Rings fandom Wikipedia uh, for a lot of this research here, and uh, it just says that there's a special root that is really only known to dwarves and it tastes like bread and it sort of has a consistency of bread, but it's a special root. And, um, and then, you know, kind of the best looking thing in, in this movie, I think was the rabbit stew. And this was, you know, it's pretty much a classic Irish English rabbit stew looked like. So, so anyways, we're gonna kind of go through how you might make some of these things. I'm not gonna go through all of them, uh, but I do have some links that I'll be posting in case anybody wants to make these. There's some people that you know, did a lot of research, experimented with these things. I wanted to sort of make the rabbit stew or something like that and try it out, but I, uh, I made this this morning, so I did not have time to do it. Uh, but we'll just start with the Lembus bread. So the Lembus bread, uh, you know, it looks kind of like this. It's it's uh it's pretty cool stuff. Um, it's 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 okay. You know, it's it's like uh it's better than the than the cram, but uh, it's still sort of like uh, something you'd take backpacking or something. It's not like, like you know, this is not like this the best most flavorful thing you'll ever get to have. But you know, it still looks pretty good. So uh, I found this blog from the starving chef and they made this lamb of bread so if you want to see how to do all this specifically you can go here and really get some great instructions i sort of condensed it to this uh presentation here but basically uh, you just need some flour you need some warm water some sugar and yeast of course to make your dough a little bit of salt there too and you know you'll you'll we'll go into what to do later but we've got some Seasonings, Italian seasoning. I'm pretty sure that's not from Lord of the Rings. I think that they really should have done more research on this part, but uh, we'll accept it. We've got olive oil. And then I don't even know what this is, but fleur de sel. I guess it is, maybe that is flaky salt, but uh, flaky salt there. So, real quick. Basically, hold on. Yeah. Um, are you, does anyone else feel like his sound is really like, gravelly or hard to hear or is it just yeah. well, a little bit okay I, can I don't know if you have... okay maybe it's just me i'll i'll try to go slower maybe that would help um so uh to make this 
um, lambda spread. Basically, you're going to make the dough by mixing the flour, salt, water, yeast, and sugar in a stand mixer, some kind of large bowl, and you let that rise until it roughly doubles in size. Then you're going to add your herbs and your spices, maybe drizzle a little bit of olive oil on there, and leave it uh, for a little bit to rest, and you'll preheat the oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. After that, uh, you know, you'll cut it up into little squares. I probably should have put this on there to make it look kind of like the nice lambda bread cracker-like things. And you'll lay it out on a baking sheet, and you'll bake for 20 to 30 minutes. And, and after the 20-minute mark, you're going to check every five minutes to make sure that the bread is good to go. And if, you, if it is, you take it out early. If it's puffed up and baked all the way through, it's good that golden brown. And then you take all that and you wrap it in a large leaf. Uh, I wasn't sure exactly what kind of leaf. So I it just seemed like it would kind of kind of make sense because I've had tamales like that. So I, it's a little improper. Yeah, uh, that's definitely gonna do... the best way. <laughs> Plant to get that plantain flavor. Perfect. That plantain leaf. That, that's definitely uh, something you could find in the middle of it. So this one I you know I wanted to just go ahead and share this. But we need a few good taters. Yep, I can hear it. Taters, brussels, hurts taters, huh? Potatoes. Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. Boil them, mash them, boil them, boil them, boil them, mash them, boil them, boil them, boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. Boil them, mash them, boil them, boil them, potato, 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 potato. Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. Potatoes, potatoes, taters, what's taters, what's taters, oil them, mash them, stick them in a stew, oil them, mash them, stick them in a stew, oil them, mash them, stick them in a stew, oil them, mash them, stick them in a stew, what's taters, what's taters, what's taters, Oh my god, the end of that just was a little I hope you guys enjoyed that. Something like out of a nightmare or something at the end. Really what the shit is going on? Oh god. Alright. Uh, okay. Damn it, you do. Well, thank you. Now, now we know how to boil and mash potatoes. Okay. All right. Don't forget to stick them, stick them uh, in a stew. <laughs> no, I forgot that part. Let me just rearrange my. Um. So, uh, here, here we go. This is from another blog post. This one actually looks pretty good, and I might try to make this. But it's from it's all geek to me. Uh, they made this rabbit stew, just like Sam. Um. So you're gonna want one rabbit. Um. And if you can't find a rabbit, then you could sort of get some uh, skinless bone-in chicken thighs. Those are, they look similar to rabbit legs, I guess. And, you know, it'll be all right. It's not going to be the same. So get yourself a rabbit. Um, you're going to want three bay leaves, five sprigs of thyme. Uh, you're going to want a bunch of sage leaves, uh, turnips, carrots, potatoes, Cooking oil, black pepper, a little bit of lamb does. You got a little bit of lamb does lying around from your previous thing. You're going to want to put that in there. <laughs> and then some uh, chicken broth here. And, uh, you know, so first thing you're going to want to do is forage for those ingredients. Uh, this is really going to make this better. It, you're going to be glad you did. So, um, you know, if you can catch the rabbit yourself, if you can get all those turnips and potatoes and carrots, uh, you, should, you should get them from the wild. And you're going to chop up all the vegetables. Uh, you're going to do a little saute with the uh, rabbit, the turnip, uh, the carrot, potatoes. So you're going to make sure those are sort of nice and golden brown. They've, they've, they're pretty much cooked through. And you're going to take your flour and you're going to just add that to your, your saute dish there until you've sort of got yourself a nice roux. 
to uh, thicken up his, his stew here. Then you're going to add your, your chicken broth. You're going to add your, your herbs and whatnot. And you're just going to let that simmer for like 90 minutes. Or if you've got a crock pot, you know, turn this into a crock pot recipe. Bam. Uh, you let that cook all day on low. You can have yourself a delicious rabbit stew. And uh, that's it. That's all I've got, guys. Uh, the rest of that stuff, I have no idea how to make it, so I'm sorry. But uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Check out the link. They, uh, you know, if you want to make this stuff. I was hoping you were going to um, show us how to make the flesh of humans that the orcs like to eat when they travel. All right, guys. Well, I'm well, cool, guys. <laughs> this, was, this was good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh...